Sifting through the Star Wars games to find the proverbial diamond in the rough can be a frustrating ordeal. If you're after a satisfying Star Wars experience though, you needn't look further than Star Wars Jedi Outcast. Developed by Raven Software and released in 2002 for Microsoft Windows and later the Xbox and GameCube. As you'd expect from a Star Wars game, there's lots of flying from planet to planet and lots of Jedi on Jedi action. That sounded dirty and I meant it to. The game begins with Kyle Katarn investigating a reported remnant outpost on Kejim with his longtime friend and companion Jan Ors. In true Star Wars fashion, the prologue is introduced via the trademark crawl sequence that fans are no doubt familiar with. Having rebuked the Force since the events of Dark Forces 2, Kyle is back to being nothing more than a gun for hire and subsequently these first few levels are just about shooting and exploration, with no lightsaber or force powers available whatsoever. Eventually Jan is captured by the main antagonist, Dasan, and spoiler alert, murdered by his apprentice, Tavion, in front of Kyle's eyes. Blind with rage, Kyle returns to the Valley of the Jedi to re-imbue himself with force powers and sets out for revenge. After a brief training sequence where you're reintroduced to your force powers, you start off provoking the local gangs and mercenaries for answers. Soon after that, coming directly into contact with remnant forces, the straggle is still banded together after the defeat of the Empire in The Return of the Jedi. Often Kyle is aided by characters from the films, most notably Lando Calrissian and even Luke Skywalker himself. And fighting alongside Skywalker in particular is definitely one of the high points of the game. While things start out kind of slow, the game really picks up pace when you arrive at Bespin, the city in the clouds, and it's when you finally have your first fight against the reborn Jedis. You will die! These are enemies who've been empowered by the mysterious properties of the Valley of the Jedi. These fights are fast and frantic and meant to mirror the chaotic combat style seen in the Phantom Menace films. Lightsabers become a literal blur as you acrobatically maneuver around your opponents, using every force power at your disposal to put these guys down. Of course, the reborn Jedis can also use the exact same force powers Kyle can, making them quite difficult at times. The most effective strategy is keeping mobile and utilizing a combination of force push and force speed, whilst just battering them relentlessly until you can land a direct hit. Furthermore, the levels on Bespin offer some fantastic large, sprawling areas for combat, as well as showing off incredible scope that doesn't ever really dwindle throughout the entire game. The levels across the board are really well designed, and some of the environments in particular are titanic in size. The textures are all very detailed and varied, and there's a lot of variety in their layout from mission to mission. Aside from the expected Stormtrooper rifles, there's also some really fantastic weapons on offer here, but once you get your hands on a lightsaber, you'll probably never use them again. I can only think of one or two instances in the entire campaign where guns are favourable over lightsabers and this is only as a means to exploit certain areas. Regardless of what weapon you use, they all look and sound great and truly one of the most notable things about this game is the soundtrack and sound effects. Music tracks are taken directly from John Williams' score from the films and manage to always accentuate the action perfectly. And there is lots of action in Jedi Outcast, there's no doubt about that. Slaughtering stormtroopers is almost cathartic and it's not uncommon to have over a dozen enemies shooting at you at any one time. Dodging around the room and deflecting blaster bolts back at your enemies, whilst flipping over their heads and cutting them down one by one is an incredibly satisfying experience. Often the AI shows some really clever and intelligent strategies, retreating if they're the last one left alive, and even holding their hands up in surrender when you've stripped their weapon from them. By the time your force powers are all maxed out, you really do feel like a total Jedi badass and become pretty much unstoppable. However, later in the game you come across these dudes called Shadow Troopers, which are lightsaber and force resistant enemies that pack a real wallop. Though it's really just a matter of keeping your wits about you, and if you're smart, these guys aren't too hard to take down. Despite how clever you are though, a common annoyance in this game is the confusion of where to go next. As I said earlier, some of the levels in Jedi Outcast are absolutely massive. The most common way to progress is to get an officer's access card or flip a switch that unlocks a nearby door. However, sometimes it's possible to simply overlook these switches, as they're often integrated into a piece of machinery or something else quite inconspicuous. Another issue with this game, which is more of a subjective thing, boils down to the way the first few levels pan out. Personally, I think it takes far too long before the game starts to get interesting. The introductory levels without force powers aren't really that bad, but they're not fantastic either. 
The shooting is acceptable, but the randomness of enemy AI makes it quite hard to hit them sometimes, as they very rarely sit still. On a first playthrough, it will literally take you 3-4 to four hours until you get your hands on a lightsaber. And even then, it's another few hours after that until you start to feel truly powerful. The game slowly advances your force powers automatically level to level, and as a result, you often feel extremely underpowered and outmatched earlier on. The first level after the Jedi training segment throws you into a large sprawling urban area on the planet of Narshada that is absolutely littered with Rodian snipers. At a point in the game where you just want to go nuts and kill things, the game forces you to be really slow and precise, carefully taking out the abundance of snipers one by one. On top of that, there's loads of guys throwing thermal detonators at you and shooting you with bowcasters. It's a real difficulty curve that is definitely going to catch most players off guard. It's often easier to not use a lightsaber at all during these moments, and as a result, these levels just flat out suck. It kind of makes sense from a storytelling perspective. They obviously wanted Kyle's transition into becoming a Jedi to be a bit more believable, and it does work on that level. But as a result, it means that it's a really hard game to get into. You really have to give this game a good 4 or 5 hours of leeway, and I would think most people wouldn't be that patient, which sucks because the last half of the game is fucking amazing, and is definitely one of the best Jedi simulators, if I can call it that, that you're ever likely to play. Finally worth noting is that there's a fantastic multiplayer mode thrown in, which has endless customization options, allowing you to create large-scale lightsaber battles with any character under multiple environments. This mode is extremely addicting and cool as shit. <laughs> Lastly, I am kind of pissed that Mark Hamill lent his voice to a character in that turd of a game, Soldier Fortune 2, but didn't do the voice for Luke Skywalker in Jedi Outcast. I mean, not only did both games come out the same year, but they were developed by the same goddamn team. Why couldn't they record his lines at the same time he did Soldier Fortune 2? It's not a deal breaker, but it does kind of frustrate me. Well, at least we got Billy D. Williams. Overall, Jedi Outcast is pretty much everything you look for in a Star Wars game. It sounds good, it looks good, and it does a really awesome job of making you feel like a Jedi Knight. It improves everything wrong with Dark Forces 2 and does so tenfold. So should you play it? Yes. Yes, you should. I can understand a lot of people getting impatient with the first act of the game and giving up on it before it really picks up speed, but those people are missing out on one of the best Star Wars games of all time. You can grab it on Steam in a Star Wars pack, which comes loaded with a bunch of other awesome games from the franchise, so if you're even remotely interested in pretending to be a Jedi, then look no further.